In this video, we're going to be photographing some water drops on some dandelion clocks. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to my YouTube channel. It is dandelion clock season here in the UK and it has been for several weeks. Dandelion clocks are a great subject to photograph, particularly for macro photography. They look great when you magnify them and also they are readily available to most people. Need a few things for this uh, video. We have some um, bingo clips and my specimen holder. Link in the description if you want to get hold of one of those. I have my backgrounds. These are custom printed backgrounds that I printed out for myself for doing macro photography on a little key ring. So I'll take these everywhere with me now. I believe it's the first time I've featured these in a video, so if any questions about them, let me know in the comments below. We have water, glycerin, we have some plasticine, some tweezers, and a syringe. Okay, those are the quick little two of the things we're going to be using for this particular shot. So the first thing I need to do is set up a dandelion clock seed. And what I'm going to do I'm going to use my specimen holder and I'm going to get a little bit of plasticine and the reason I'm using plasticine is if I want to add more than one seed to it it's easier just to stick the seed into the plasticine than it is to try and manipulate this uh, crocodile clip. So let's do that. With that done I need to get a single seed off my dandelion. I'm just going to grab a clump, put them there, using my tweezers grab the dandelion seed I'm going to stick him into plasticine. So now that's done what I want to do is before I set my camera up I want to make up my water solution. So for this we're going to do a 50-50 mixture. So I'm just going to tip in some water and then I'm going to tip in some glycerin what the glycerin will do is it will help to stop the water from evaporating too much and it also I think it just gives a better round shape. The important thing is with the glycerin is your water drop is not going to evaporate as quickly as it would do normally. That's the main reason why I'm using it. That's a good shake up. Now I've done that. I shall fill up my syringe more than enough. So I've got my camera now again it's the 650D with the Canon 100mm macro lens. Now in the last video we did with dandelion clocks we used the 50mm on extension tubes. It doesn't matter which one you use okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my lens up to be one to one magnification. All right so I'm in manual mode okay and I want to choose my f-stop for this. So I'm going to go to start with, we'll use f7.1. Go into live view. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to move the camera or the focusing, I'm just going to move my subject back and forward until it becomes in focus. Our main subject is going to be the water drop on this uh, dandelion clock. So that's looking okay there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to take our syringe. And we want to put a water drop onto this dandelion clock. I do believe as well with the glycerin it helps it to stick a little bit better. Okay so now that I've done that I need to refocus. Again we've just got to reposition. We've got quite a bit in focus there. So I'm going to set my exposure. We're currently at one third of a second exposure and I'm going to take a test shot. We've got a little bit of camera shake in there and that's because the mirror is coming up and it's shaking the camera as it does so. So what we're going to do to combat that is we're going to go into what's called mirror lockup mode. Now please consult your camera manual on how to do mirror lockup mode. I'll just come into the settings. The mirror lockup does not work in live view, not on my camera. Okay, so I'll come out of live view. When I click it once, 
You hear that? The mirror locks up. You wait for the vibrations of the mirror lock up to finish. And then press it again. It takes the fit. And you can use this on multiple um, scenarios, landscape, and you can use it on astral photography is quite often it's used on to stop the camera shake. In this case, we're using it because my floorboards are very bouncy. All right, so now we've got something that we are in a in a round where we like, but the background is boring. So that's where these will come in. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go in, back into my live view. And I can hold up some backgrounds to see what I like. Let's take a look at a different one. A look at this one. That one's okay. Let's have a look at a blue. See what blue is like. Okay, so now I've introduced a background. Got to adjust my shutter speed to compensate because it's a little bit darker. So now I'm at one eighth of a second. I'm just going to hold it there. I don't need to use a stand. It doesn't matter if I'm moving. In fact, sometimes I do move the background because you want the background to be blurred anyway. So I'm just holding that there. I'm going to click once again to lock up the mirror. And then wait a few seconds for the vibration to finish. And then hit it again for, to take the exposure. There we go. Beautiful. Wouldn't you agree? So I'm going to take a few more pictures now with different backgrounds, which I don't think you need to see that. So I will show you the pictures of the different backgrounds. You can see my reflector and video lights in the drops. If you try this at home, you won't need to deal with that issue, but these can be removed in Photoshop. And when you're doing this, you don't have to hold them like that. You can hold them in any position. And the ones I've created, as I'm showing you on the picture, they have different color in different sections. You've got some uh, light spots, dark spots, basically a grunge texture with color over the top. So we've got some great images there, but you don't have to stop there. What we can do now is I can take another seed and I can pop this back there, look. And again, I'm using my live view to see in real time how this is affecting the image. So I can see there that it's it's overlapping a little bit and I don't want it there. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. There we go. So now we have some out of focus clocks in the background. And again, I've got to gotta refocus because every little knock you do will send your clock out of focus okay so now again backgrounds so i'm going to put my shutter speed to one six of a second okay and let's take another picture game mirror lock up And again, you don't need these backgrounds if you want to try this. I've just grabbed myself some of my Canon paper and I can just put this in the background. And again, I can go into live view and I can just move it around to see what I like. Okay, so you can see there, you can use anything as a background. New lock up again and take the exposure. Well, there we go. So you can see there, you can have a lot of fun with just a simple dandelion clock and a water drop. Now you can use this method for refraction photography. That's where you have an object in the background and the object goes into focus with the water drop. Now that's something I'm going to do on a separate video because I don't want to overwhelm you with this single video with so many techniques. So that's how you can do a simple creative water drop photography with dandelion clocks. I absolutely love dandelion clocks. They are great subjects because they're easy to get hold of and they're great for practicing on. If you give this a go at home, I'd love to see the results. Join the Macro World Facebook group, link in the description below. Post your work, I'd love to see it.
So I'd like to thank you for watching this video. And again, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done already. And as always, I'll see you on the next video. Now the seed itself, we are not going to be photographing, just the stem and the actual, you know, like the umbrella, but I'm not fucking, <laughs> delete that. So I've got my camera in now, so I'm just going to take the lens cap off. And again, because I'm in a studio environment, I'm not using the UV. Um, do that again. I am then going to flip into live view. If I had a card in the camera, I'd flip into live view. Yeah, I've been doing this almost a year and a half, and I still forget to put memory card in before pressing record on the camera.